Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's time to take a look at the current state of the GPU market in a monthly update video. In what shouldn't be a surprise to anyone really, GPU prices are still super expensive and everyone involved is still making a ton of cash. Nvidia for example just announced their earnings for the quarter which included a huge jump in year on year revenue for their gaming business. So if you're a GPU manufacturer you're probably super happy with the current situation and if you're a GPU buyer, you will be crying yourself to sleep. In this particular edition of the GPU pricing update, I'm not going to be spending as much time talking about the current retail market because really not much has been changing in that space over the last few months. Prices of cards available on store shelves remain high. Availability is pretty good in most regions, especially outside the US. It's just that the actual prices of those GPUs remain inflated due to a variety of market pressures we've been talking about for months now. And all of this is unlikely to change throughout the busy holiday shopping period. In fact, we've been told from a couple of retailers that GPU sales right now aren't particularly great as interest in cards at current prices is low, but they can't reduce prices to any great degree due to insidious tactics from suppliers like bundling and just simple price inflation. So there appears to be a bit of a stalemate on that front. What I did want to talk about at the start of this video is really the big question on everyone's mind over the last couple of months, and that's, will GPU pricing ever go down? When will it go down? And are there any upcoming solutions to the problem in the works? One story that's been doing the rounds recently is that of NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 2060 refresh with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. This launch has been bubbling away for some time now with reports and rumors going back months, but it seems that things really are gearing up to produce an RTX 2060 refresh sometime in January or early 2022. Gigabyte models are starting to appear at the ECC, for example. Some websites are calling this a GPU set to combat miners and to e-stock woes, but is this really going to be the case? From a production standpoint, it should be cheaper to build an RTX 2060 than Nvidia's other GPUs. For starters, it uses a last generation Turing GPU, which is built using TSMC's older and cheaper 12 nanometer node, which is in slightly less demand than their leading edge nodes. However, the RTX 2060 still uses GDDR6 memory, the same memory used on current GPUs, including the RTX 3060, and the same amount as the 3060 at 12 gigabytes. So if there are any supply constraints on GDDR6 memory, or if pricing on that memory is still stupidly high, the RTX 2060 may not necessarily be any real solution to the GPU availability crisis. However, because it's built on a previous generation node, it is possible that total supply for NVIDIA GPUs will increase, provided they have bought additional capacity at TSMC, and we have no evidence either way to know whether they have or not. If supply is fully maxed out on Samsung's 8 nanometer node with no room to buy additional capacity, and if supply of GPU dies is the main thing that's restricting additional GPU production, then it's possible this launch will increase supply. But there's a lot of ifs there, and I'm not at all convinced that simply reverting to a previous design on a previous node will significantly boost the possible supply of GPUs. For example, throughout the last year we've heard of many price hikes and availability issues for all sorts of components used for GPUs, everything from memory and surface components to PCBs themselves. Solving foundry capacity for GPUs isn't the only potential limiting factor. The other angle being discussed is that of mining. The theory here is that the RTX 2060 is a less attractive card to mine on than other GPUs, such as the RTX 3060, because it's less good at mining. However, that's not currently the case according to what to mine. The RTX 2060 is actually more profitable right now than the RTX 3060, but that's from mining smaller coins. It is true that the 3060 is a more attractive option for mining Ethereum, but Ethereum isn't the only cryptocurrency you can mine, and that's where the 2060 comes back into its own. And when the RX 6600 and 6600 XT are being snapped up by miners and its profitability is hardly amazing, I don't think the RTX 2060 will be any less attractive. I suspect it would still be bought up for mining. In my opinion, releasing an RTX 2060 refresh and expecting that to have a significant impact on GPU prices is a bit far-fetched. It's also highly unlikely that any refresh would be available at whatever MSRP NVIDIA decides to set. They already have the RTX 3060 at $330, AMD has the RX 6600 at $330 as well, and there's a strong used market for RTX 2060s. Presumably, NVIDIA would have to set an MSRP below $330, but 
The current market prices for the aforementioned cards are all above $500 or above $700 in the case of the 3060. Nvidia would need to produce a massive amount of these cards to drag pricing in the market lower. With all of that said, I don't think releasing a refreshed RTX 2060 is necessarily a bad move either, as any small change may end up helping some people buy a more affordable GPU. It's also possible that an RTX 2060 re-release would actually be more attractive and better performing than Nvidia releasing an RTX 3050 in the same price bracket. They could release an RTX 3050 at any moment, so let's break down a few numbers. We know based on our latest data that the RTX 2060 is about 17% slower than the RTX 3060 at 1440p, and roughly 8% slower than an RX 6600. We also know from the mobile side that the RTX 3050 design using GA107, or even the RTX 3050 Ti for that matter, has at least 33% fewer CUDA cores than an RTX 3060, and it is limited to either 4 or 8 gigabyte configurations due to its 128-bit memory bus with lower memory bandwidth to boot. And then in mobile configurations, the 3050 and 3050 Ti end up somewhere between 25 and 35% slower than the RTX 3060, and many times they come in slower than the RTX 2060. If it's cheaper or easier to produce the 2060's 445 square millimeter TU106 die on TSMC 12 nanometer than it is to produce the 3050's probably sub 200 square millimeter GA107 die on Samsung 8 nanometer while also performing better it would come out as the better option than moving forward with a desktop RTX 3050 design for now. There have also been some rumours relating to an RTX 3090 Ti and potentially other refreshes in the early parts of 2020, however I don't think producing a new and super expensive GPU, even more expensive than the RTX 3090, will help out too much. However, a more likely contender for improving the supply and pricing situation would be AMD's Navi 24 GPU designs, which we are yet to see and are currently expected in the early parts of 2022. At the moment, AMD has only released down to their Navi 23 designs, which are 237 square millimeters of TSMC 7 nanometer, and they currently sit as mid range options. Navi 24 would theoretically be a smaller, cheaper, and easier to produce GPU with an MSRP in the $200 range, although, of course, higher in terms of real street price. We haven't seen any new GPUs in that sort of class since the GTX 16 Super Series and RX 5500 XT at the end of 2019. Then of course we have upcoming Intel Arc GPUs as well in the early parts of 2022 which hopefully will further add to GPU availability. So as far as the GPU makers are concerned, their solution is to produce more GPUs and produce new GPU options covering more of the pricing range, though of course it's been a slow process as expected to get those lower tier GPUs as demand for pricier options has been sky high and companies always want to prioritize those products. Nvidia also has their LHR program to reduce mining profitability, though miners have been slowly chipping away at it. Outside of continuing to produce GPUs at a record rate, there isn't a real solution or a quick fix to what we're currently seeing. Companies can't just go to customers and say, okay guys, that's enough, stop buying our GPUs well above MSRP, please only buy it at a lower price. I mean, that's not how it works. Street pricing is dictated by supply and demand, and it's only when those things change will we see price movement. This makes the question of when pricing will go down hard to answer. Pricing already has come down from the absolute worst period in 2021, but as expected has stagnated towards the busy shopping period at the end of the year. Personally, I find it hard to make any sort of definitive predictions beyond that as there's a few too many things going on. However, the doom and gloom of GPU pricing remaining high for some time I think is overblown as I've said before. Cards are already sitting on shelves at inflated pricing and if that continues for many months, sales will dry up and this will force pricing downward. We've seen peaks and troughs in the market before many times, this is really nothing new, although of course exceptional circumstances this time around is extending that boom period for pricing. Pricing for premium high-end cards will almost certainly blow out well past $1500 with a future generation though, but that doesn't mean there won't be cards available at price points covering the entire market. Now let's talk about the current GPU market. Cryptocurrencies continue to be strong with most coins including Ethereum increasing in value over the last month. This has also seen an increase in difficulty suggesting there's still interest in adding to the stockpile of GPUs being used for mining. Profitability for most of the month was increasing until the last couple of days where crypto has cooled a bit and left profitability month on month flat. So a pretty typical month for the main factor in GPU pricing and it's really not worth spending much more time on. Street prices for new GPUs, as evaluated using eBay completed listings in the past week, show that after a couple of months of relatively flat pricing, 
prices have risen in November. That's pretty much expected given what we've seen in the crypto market and what has been the case in prior months, where scalper prices reflect crypto prices to a lower degree and with a bit of a time delay. Nvidia GPUs saw an average price hike of 6% month on month, with the largest gains for the RTX 3090 and RTX 3060 Ti. Despite these price increases, Nvidia GPUs are still selling for some of the lowest prices we've seen this year. Pricing is only back up to the level we saw in August and September, which is significantly lower than the peaks we saw earlier in 2021. This was pretty much expected as we move into the holiday season, and it's only after that would I expect any further movement in the GPU market for new products. On the AMD side, pricing increased to a greater degree than Nvidia, which again is a fairly typical trend we see, which I suspect is due to AMD's lower volume of sales and zero restrictions over mining performance. New AMD GPUs from the Radeon RX 6000 series were up 9% month on month, including large gains for products like the 6700 XT. The 6600 was relatively spared, as it's already received the bulk of its price inflation at launch last month. Like with Nvidia, the pricing trend for AMD GPUs has been bouncing around for the last few months, but hasn't changed substantially. Pricing is still quite a bit lower than what we saw in May and June, which was the peak of the worst pricing for AMD's products. Just based on product volume, it doesn't seem like AMD is placing too much priority on pushing out a ton of GPUs, except for the 6700 XT, which is still being sold in relatively decent amounts, though lower than some of Nvidia's cards. As for used GPUs, when there are increases in brand new current generation GPUs, there are also increases in the used market. Nvidia's GeForce 20 series saw price hikes across the board, with an average rise of 6% month on month. The RTX 2060 Super was worst affected and somehow is now selling for $30 higher than the RTX 2070 on average. All of these GPUs are selling for well above their launch MSRP, especially so with the RTX 2060 as competition in that low end of the market is very poor. The GeForce 16 series is Nvidia's current mainstream range of GPUs, although we're looking exclusively at used pricing here. Again, most GPUs increased in price, and it's frankly pretty ridiculous that cards like the GTX 1660 Super are still selling for more than $500 used right now. I'm hoping the supposed RTX 2060 refresh and new Navi 24 GPUs will have some impact here, but I'm not counting on it. The GeForce 10 series also saw price hikes, particularly for the GTX 1060 series, which is servicing the $300 market at the moment. If you were building a new PC and only had $300 US to spend on a GPU, unfortunately the GTX 1060 is one of the best products to choose right now, yet it still costs a lot more than its $250 launch price for the 6GB version. When mining profitability goes up, so does the price for AMD's Radeon RX 5000 series GPUs, especially the 5700 XT, because they're very good at mining. It's pretty wild that right now the 5700 XT is selling for slightly more than $1,000 on average, which is 2.5 times its launch MSRP of $400. Collectively, these are the highest prices for the 5000 series since May, which is no coincidence as cryptocurrency prices are higher now than they were back then. Then we get to AMD's older GPUs, which have also increased in price, similar to the other groupings of GPUs that we've looked at. It's still the case where RX 580 GPUs are not worth buying for gaming compared to the GTX 1060. And look, if you're asking me several years ago whether we'd still be talking about the RX 580 and GTX 1060 at the end of 2021, I'd say you were dreaming, but here we are. So that's the current state of the GPU market as we sit here in November of 2021. GPU prices are up across the board, and it seems that the upcoming solution to this is a new range of graphics cards in early 2022. Specifically, the supposed RTX 2060 refresh, Navi 24 GPUs from AMD, and of course Intel's new Arc series. Whether or not these will actually help GPU prices significantly is another discussion entirely, and I'm not convinced just yet, but also I guess they can't hurt the situation. While there hasn't been great news this month, I don't think the findings were all that surprising either. With cryptocurrency prices remaining high and an increase in demand at the end of every year due to holiday shopping, it was always very unlikely that GPU prices would go down right before Christmas. There was certainly very little chance AIBs and distributors would lower prices during this time when they've managed to squeeze the market all year, and I'd expect that to continue in December, so yeah, don't expect any better news this time next month. As we hit the final month of the year, what should you do in terms of buying new hardware? Well, if you are building a new PC from scratch or wanting to jump into PC gaming, you've 
kind of got no choice but to pay ludicrous prices, although some products are better than others. GPUs like the RX 6600 are among the better value buys in terms of cost per frame, while there are several older GPUs that you should uh, definitely avoid, like the RX 5700 XT, due to their much higher value for mining. The other genuine option right now is to forget about building a PC right now and grab just a game console instead, which frankly is a better choice for pure gaming in the current market. For those with existing PCs, there is little reason to upgrade right now. The majority of today's big PC releases actually play fine on older hardware, and titles like Battlefield 2042, as an example, would likely benefit more from a CPU upgrade than a GPU upgrade. Even the RX 580 is fine at 1080p ultra settings, provided your CPU is good enough. Older GPUs are also fine in titles like Far Cry 6, even at 1440p using medium settings. Yeah, the experience isn't as good as it could be, but it's not like this current wave of new game releases is unplayable on older hardware. As we've shown previously as well, ultra settings often don't make sense, and playing on high or even medium presets is just fine, which further enables gaming on existing GPUs until upgrades are a bit more affordable. Anyway, that's it for this month's GPU pricing update. Unfortunately, we don't have excellent news to share or anything really good to say at all, but I guess we're kind of just looking for 2022 at this point because, as I said, I don't expect too much more movement in pricing throughout the rest of this year, and really it'll be up to the first couple of quarters next year to see if anything can change. And at this point, who knows? If you're interested in supporting the channel and the testing that we do, please consider supporting us on Patreon or Floatplane to keep us nice and independent and to give our opinions on things like we've been doing for this time. You'll get access to things like our Discord chat, monthly live streams, and all that good stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.